Are you going to say hello or what then? <coughs> Is that your way of saying hello? <coughs> okay. You're supposed to look that way. Say hello. Who's this? <laughs> say hello. Hello. Strange creature. Hello everyone, it's me. Um, right, today I'm working in my circle journal and I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic and I found a fantastic photograph on a, um, on a website called the Graphics Fairy and I've decided that I was going to use it for this page. This is what I've done with it. So this is the image that I got from the graphicfairy.com and as you can see um, I have printed it out already onto a piece of paper but I have photoshopped it slightly. I haven't altered any of the colours or anything like that with it. All I've done is um, alter the size of the image to make it bigger so that it will work better in my circle journal. And all I'm going to do is just roughly tear it out from the page so that I've got some rough edges that I can blend in with paint. So now that we're all torn out, I'm going to stick it down with this collage glue stick from Ranger. And I was going to do that, but it ran out and I haven't got another one. So I tried to use as much as I possibly could. Um, I got the last remnants of the glue out of it before it finally gave up the ghost. But there's enough for it to stick down um, onto the page. So we're about as stuck down as we're going to get, so I'm going to grab the first of my colours which is the Naples Yellow Acrylic Paint from Reeves and I'm also going to grab my Titanium White from Reeves so that I've got the two colours that I can mix them together and turn the colours down with. My aim was to try and get the same sort of colour balance that I have in the, in the picture of the two ladies. So I wanted to try and get a similar colour to the background so that it blends quite easy. Now, in the past I have blended them in by bringing the paint all the way through to the figures which you can see me doing now and it does really help to blend the, the image into the main background if you can do that. And Obviously while you're looking at it the paint's still wet so it will appear a little bit darker before it dries so when it does dry it will go a little bit lighter and blend in a bit more. So because we're working in an art journal then the colours don't have to be 100% perfect. You don't have to get a complete invisible bond between the picture and the rest of the page. It's an art journal so it can look painterly, it can look a little bit sketchy and it doesn't have to be perfect. If you haven't managed to get all the paint blended perfectly don't worry about it. That's part of the fun of doing this kind of technique is that you can play around with the colour, you can adjust it, you can add in more colours, you can add darker tones, you can add lighter tones. As long as you've got a kind of balance and it fits well, it's going to work. Because my main focal image, the actual paper, is starting to get wet, it is actually buckling a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. I'm not bothered whether or not it does lift a little bit because it will just add a little bit of texture and depth to it. Um, but hopefully when it dries, it will settle back down again and it will tighten back up. So I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more of the white paint, the titanium white, and then I'm going to bring in my third colour, which is the pale olive. And I'm just going to put it straight on top of that um, Naples yellow, because I want to try and blend all the colours together. So it doesn't matter if I mix all three together to create that tone. It's just going to add that mottled kind of vintage effect that I want. So while the paint's still wet, you will see me mix and blend and brush in and try and just diffuse those hard edges between the colours. So it's going to be a case of, I'm just going to work it and work it and work it um, until I'm happy with it. I do have an idea in my head for this page as to what I want it to look like and I know what elements I want to include on this page. but. I'm not rigidly sticking to that image that's in my head. If it does change slightly, then 
as it, most art journal pages do change. Um, you just go with the flow. The, the page will make itself. You just allow the paint to do its thing. And, you know, nine times out of ten, the page that you want will appear from all the workings that you're doing. Lots of art journalists have said the same thing. You know, many times the page will create itself and the page will dictate what it wants to look like. So you just have to let go and go with the flow. Let the art create itself. I think I'm just about happy with that background now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush down and I'm gonna put it to one side and allow it to dry and then have a little bit of a tidy and clean up and then I'll be right back. It's all dry and I've brought out my Tim Holtz Flourish stencil. I have my titanium white acrylic paint and I have a craft sponge. And all I'm going to do is just stencil through with the paint using the sponge in three areas around the circle. And it was at this point that somebody started barking to let me know that he wanted to go out. That didn't take long, so back to it. So the last part of the stenciling I'm going to put over on this side. So I've just done it in, um, in three areas because I don't want to overdo this page. I don't want to do too many layers on it. It is going to be quite a simple page. So I'm happy with the way that's turned out. So all I need to do now is just give it a quick blast with the heat tool so that I can add on my next layer. So for my next layer, I'm going to use the Harlequin stencil from TCW and I'm going to bring back that Naples yellow paint and do the same thing again, another piece of craft sponge. And I'm just going to add that Harlequin pattern into the background. Okay, so I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm happy with the fact that the Harlequin pattern is there, but it doesn't stand out too much because I've used the same colour as I did do on the background. Now, all I'm doing now is just using the remainder of the Naples yellow and the white, and I'm just mixing it together, and I'm just going to dab around and stipple around the page just to blend in those harder edges. So this is where we start just to soften any edges that we think are a bit too hard and stand out too much. And I think that's just about it for the sponging. I don't think I can do any more with that sponge to make it look any better. So I'm gonna stop there. 
So I want to create some kind of border and for that I'm going to use the Tree Branch Brown Archival Ink and an ink blending foam and I'm just going to go around the edges just to add that kind of dark border but not too dark. If I wanted it to uh, really dark I would have gone with black but I've decided to go with brown just to give it that little bit more of a vintage kind of old grungy feel. And I think that's just about it. I don't need to add any more. It's time to add my quote block and for that I'm going to use this matte medium from Mod Podge and I'm just going to add some of that matte medium onto my art journal page just onto the right hand side as you can see and then I'm just going to add it to the back of my blocks. Now these have been printed from my computer um, on an inkjet so to stop the ink from blending, to stop it from bleeding, I have gone over them with a chapstick first just to make sure they are sealed. And as you can see, it works perfectly. But of course I had to take it off because it wasn't straight. That's the problem with working with a circular journal, is making sure that you've got everything straight. So I always try and line it up with the holes on the left hand side of the page. So if I know they're kind of straight then I know everything else is going to be kind of straight. So now the first one's stuck down and I'm happy with its position, I can add the second one. So this acrylic paint is from Docrafts Design Objectives and it's called, well it's black, it's noir and I'm just going to mix a little bit of water to it then grab my fan brush and then I'm just going to create some black splatters. Now the reason I'm adding black is because there's no other black on the page apart from in the photograph. So it does need something just to tie in with the rest of the page and I know the quote's in black but I'm also going to add some black borders to that as well. So I'm happy with the splatters there, I'm going to leave that, I'm not going to add any more and I'm just going to have a quick tidy up and then I'm going to give it a heat blast with my heat gun just to make sure it's all set before I grab my pen. So this is a Pigma Micron Permanent Archival Ink Pen and it's a number five nib and this is from Sakura. So all I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to add a little bit of a black line, almost a drop shadow underneath the base of the word blocks and down the right hand side. I'm not going to go all the way around because I don't think it needs it. I think that the white and the black stands out enough that just adding that little bit of a drop shadow is plenty um, to make it stand out. And just excuse me because somebody wants me. dog of mine is being very needy today. So all that remains for me to do now is just to sign and date it because I'm not going to do any more to this page now. I think enough is enough and sometimes less is more. Well, I hope you enjoyed that page. I certainly love that vintage photo of those two ladies. I may do something else with it. Who knows what I may create. So that's all from me for now. If you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button here. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.